everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're finally diving into the new palette from Gucci. I have been waiting on this palette for a minute. I am going to dive in, I'm gonna play with it, I'm gonna create three looks with it, I'm gonna do some swatches and also a few comparisons. Lots to say about this new palette. And this is what she looks like. I talked about this in my buyer brows and I just loved the overall look of it. I just, I loved it so much that I thought I have to have it. Even if I don't like the shadows, I just love this case. I think it's so beautiful, which is pretty ridiculous if you really think about it. Uh, but this is what it looks like on the inside. And these shadows are quite small. I think it's because this casing is so big that it makes them look smaller because you can actually remove this and have it like this. And if I pull it out of this big case, they don't look as small. The reason why this is removable is this is like a collector piece where once you get done using the shadows, you can use it for jewelry or whatever you want. So I really like that they made it that way. And it's very easy to snap back in there and it doesn't really fall out, which is nice. So I ordered this on the Saks Fifth Avenue website on September 15th, okay? And it was a pre-order situation. I've never done a pre-order through Saks, so that was my first experience, which wasn't very good. And it said that the expected date to ship was October 5th. I bought it, I paid for it, went through my bank account, the whole nine yards. I waited and I waited for it to ship and it never shipped. I got this email on October 15th saying, there was an issue with your payment. Hi, Tara. Unfortunately, or your order has been canceled. If you'd like to place it again, please update your payment method on the accounts page. I'm like, what? So I called them and I was like, there is no problem with the order because I already paid for it. So I actually had to send a picture of it in my account that it cleared and she's like oh I'm not sure why it was canceled so they couldn't give me a reason why it was canceled so anyways I got a refund and I decided to just go ahead and order it from the Sephora website so I would recommend buying this on the Sephora website if this is a palette that you want to pick up this palette like I said it does retail for $149 and the description on this palette, it says it's a true collector's item finished with a gold trim and complete with a mirror. The palette features 12 eyeshadows with three finishes. So you get a matte, a metallic, and a satin finish. Those are the three finishes. This palette has nine grams worth of product, which is 0.31 ounces. It is made in Italy and it is called the floral number one. And I do love the look of this palette. It is really beautiful to look at, but Lots to say about it. Holy smokes, do I got a lot to say. I'm sure you guys are already looking forward to that. So. I also got these today. So I did not buy these. A friend of mine who is not really into YouTube and makeup, but she loves Clay de Po. Like Clay de Po is one of her favorite brands. And she knows that I love makeup and she lives about three hours from me. I get a text message from her and she says, hey girl, just letting you know that I've ordered something from Nordstrom and it's coming to your house. And I was like, wait, what? She goes, I know how much you love cream blushes. Clay de Peau just launched limited edition blushes and they're cream blushes and I wanna ship them to you. I'm like, okay. She got me two shades. So I didn't even know what they were. I didn't even know that Clay de Peau had cream blushes. I got these in the mail today from Nordstrom. So I thought, you know what? We're talking about a $150 palette. Might as well throw in $60 cream blushes that I didn't have to pay for, right? So I might as well throw in $60 cream blushes and share them with you guys, show you guys the colors of these and apply them on the skin and kind of give you guys my thoughts. Now these are limited edition and when I went on the Nordstrom website, I couldn't find them. So I think they might be out of stock. Like I think they might've sold out. If I find them at other retailers, I will link them in the description, but I didn't even order these. I didn't even know what the shades were. It was kind of a fun surprise. So the two shades that she bought me, which I don't know if there was more than two shades, but um, this is 202 Joyful in Pink. So that is what this shade looks like. It's kind of a really pretty light pink. Okay. And then we have 201, which is warmth, I can't say that word, warmth magic. 
like that's a really hard word to say warts war and it sounds dumb the more that you say it the worse it sounds so that's warts magic i can't say it drives me crazy i was really excited when she sent them to me of course i will share swatches of these so that you guys can see these shades and how they apply and give you guys my opinion on clay de Poe cream blushes because i've never used them before so thank you to my friend for shipping them to me. I am excited. So that's what we're doing in today's video, you guys. It's all about very, very expensive, very expensive makeup. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the three tutorials using the Gucci palette. Then we will jump into the cream blush try-on portion. Then we will get into the swatches and comparisons. And then I will jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. After all of the ordering fiasco that I talked about in the intro, let's open up this palette. So the packaging is pretty much the same as the packaging when I ordered the powder and also the bronzer. So it is very similar. It has the little ridges in the pink. So it's inside this protected black cardboard. And then it's inside this little velvet pouch. And then this is the palette and it's really beautiful guys it's a pretty palette so it's got this gold all the way around on the back it's like this light pink color so you push this little button right here and it pops open Ooh, these are small <laughs> these are smaller than i thought they were going to be so it has this little plastic protector over top of the shadows Okay, the shade I was most excited about was this pink one, and it looks like it's a huge disappointment. So that's the purple, that's that silver shade, and that's the pink. The pink is hella weak. Let me do the pink one more time. Oh, that pink is terrible. So I'm gonna grab the BK Beauty A504, which is in collaboration with Angie from Hot and Flashy. I'm gonna go into this shade. I wanna see how this shade looks on my skin tone. I'm gonna to put that right here. Now I'm gonna grab this shade right here, right next to it. Okay, so I'm finding that that dark shade is a tad bit patchy. I'm not really loving the way that that applied, to be honest. Now I'm gonna go into this purple shade right here. I'm gonna take the Refer number 21 brush and I'm gonna bring that on the lid. This shade doesn't have a ton of pigment but I am getting some fallout, so just kind of know that. I think I'm gonna take my blending brush and I'm gonna go into that purple like silver shade and I'm gonna bring that into the crease because I feel like it's a pretty soft enough shimmer that you can bring it in the crease and have it kind of blended into those mattes. That worked out so much better. I was hating the look with those other mattes until I did that. that to me looks really beautiful. I like the way that that satin shimmer works. Like I don't, I wouldn't call that a metallic shade, but I like the way that that went in and just kind of smoothed everything out. And I actually really like that color. So that's pretty. I wanna go into this shade right here. I wanna see what that would look like, like on the center of the lid and place that right here on the center. Oh yeah, that's pretty. and then kind of bringing it up. That's really pretty. I like that. I'm gonna go into the black. So I'm gonna take the flat definer from Sigma and I'm gonna go into the black right here. I am going to add some depth, like right there on the outer corner. I don't like that color of black. It's more of like a blue black versus a black. 
I don't know, I don't love it. So I'm gonna go over top of it with this color or you know, maybe going over top of it with that color. I'm using it to add some of that depth here, but I just don't, I don't, I didn't like the color of the black. Okay, so I went ahead and threw on some concealer. Now I'm gonna go into this shadow first. And then I'm gonna go into that dark brown right next to it. And then I'm gonna go into this shadow right here. Okay, so I am back. This is the final look, and this is really pretty look. I will be honest though, like this shade kind of saved the day. I, <laughs> it kind of came in and just really saved it. This is a beautiful, look and you could even deepen it more to create something a little bit more like nighttime appropriate um but without this shade like it was kind of getting ready to take a nosedive because of this shadow i really do love the way that this purple kind of it's like a purple silver color and it's a really really soft kind of satin shadow with a just a tiny bit of shimmer which is like perfect to put in the crease and kind of save the day with a with a patchy mat. So that is a really pretty color and I really like this look. It's really pretty. Uh, so I did throw on a lash. It's kind of hanging on by a thread and I put a tiny bit of mascara on. I am gonna be wiping this eye look off so I didn't wanna go like too heavy with the mascara. So that's it for look number one. Let's go ahead and jump into look number two. I think I'm gonna go in with this terracotta shade. Like I wanna see how that shade blends. I'm gonna take the Wayne Goss number 20 brush and I am going to bring that here in the crease. So I feel like this shadow is blending better than that other matte. It's a tiny bit patchy, but like it's easy to remedy. I'm gonna grab the refer number 21 and I'm gonna go into this shade right here. I don't really know how this is gonna look. It's just weird, this palette bring a little bit of it up into the crease. So I'm gonna grab this shade right here. I'm gonna bring that here on the outer corner. See how that shade, like, it like grabs. It grabs on and then you have to work kind of hard to get it to blend out. So I'm gonna go back into that terracotta color and kind of bring that back to life here in the crease. So I went ahead and added some concealer and I'm gonna bring that terracotta shade like right underneath the lower lash line and kind of pull it together. Now I'm gonna go into the dark matte and just kind of add it here to add some depth. I just don't really love that dark matte. It's a little tricky to work with. Okay, so this is the final look for look number two. The lash is legit hanging on by a fret thread. Like I could pull it off, but I just, you know, I don't wanna add more glue because I'm just gonna be taking it off immediately. But I will say, even though I didn't know that these colors would go together very good, I actually, like the way that's turned out. It's not my favorite. It could be worse. So this is the final look for look number two. Let's go ahead and jump into look number three. Okay, so I am back. I went ahead and wiped those two eyeshadow looks off. I did kind of ruin my brows, but that's okay. I want to try this shade right here. It kind of has a little bit of a metallic sheen to it. Um, but my gosh, it just does not swatch very good at all. Like it doesn't seem like there's much pigment at all. I'm gonna grab my Smith 253 and I'm gonna go into that shade. Let's put this on the lid. 
And the Smith 253 does a good job like picking shadows up. Um, it has a really good grip to it, especially shadows like this. This is not the prettiest shadow. It is just not a good shadow. Like it could be, that's I think the part that's frustrating is that this shadow could be pretty, but it's just not. Like, I don't know why, I don't know why they wasted their time creating that shadow because it's just super weak and just not pretty. I had high hopes for that shade, which is why I saved it for the third look because I was kind of hoping I could wear that for like the, the intro and stuff, but this is terrible. I do not like this at all. So I'm gonna wipe this off and start over. My poor eyes. Okay, so I wiped that look off. I'm gonna go into this purple shade. I really wanna see what this purple shade will look like. It looks like it's as pretty as this one. So I wanna try that one. Oh yeah, that's a pretty shade. Now why can't the pink look like that? That is a really pretty shadow. What I like about this is that it's kind of like the one that's right next to it. It's really soft and it has some, it's that soft satin that really blends and it's really beautiful. So I don't mind that shadow. That shadow is really pretty. I'm gonna grab this shade right here and I'm gonna bring that in the crease. Kind of using it as a base. Now I'm going to take the Sonia G Worker Pro and I'm going to go into this color. I am going to softly kind of bring that up and into the crease. The reason why I'm bringing this up and into the crease is because I feel like there are some negatives with this palette and one of the positives is being able to bring the satin shades into the crease and have them blend the way that this is. So that is the reason why I'm doing that again with the shadow because I feel like that, in my opinion, is one of the pluses of this palette. There's just not a lot of things that I love about the palette, but the one thing that I do love is how that shadow blends in the crease, those satins. They blend to a perfection. I went ahead and threw on some concealer. I'm gonna grab this shade and kind of use it as a base, just like I did on the upper lash. Now I'm gonna wipe the brush off and I'm gonna go into that purple shade. Okay, eyes are done, and I actually really, really like this color on the lid. I think it's a very beautiful way to wear a purple shadow. This is very pretty. I love this eyeshadow look, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. So I wanted to pop on camera because I haven't put any powder on or any bronzer or anything, but a friend of mine sent me two shades of the Clay de Peau cream blushes. Now she is not a YouTuber, nor does she really watch YouTube. She's just a friend of mine. Like we've been friends for years. I'm assuming because they're Clay de Peau, they're probably pretty pricey. Now are these new? Because I don't know. I guess I should have found out exactly what these are before I came on camera, but. So she picked up two shades. She got Joyful in Pink and Warmth Magics. Oh, are these like the limited edition ones? Are they limited edition? Because the ones on the website have a black lid. So these might be limited edition. Ooh, okay. This is what the packaging looks like. It's got these little cute birds on it. Okay, so this is Joyful in Pink. And this is Warmth Magic. So you can kind of see this one's a little bit darker. I gotta find a clean brush, blush brush because 
Holy smokes, all of my blush brushes are dirty. This is about as clean as I'm gonna get in my collection. I mean, I guess I could use this one. I could use this one, this one's new. This is the Smith 157 brush. So I'm gonna grab this shade, which is Joyful in Pink, number 202. Hold on, let's see. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty. Okay, Clydepo, this is pretty. As you can see, it has that transparency. So I've talked about this before in my cream blush reviews, but so as you can see, this one has a shine to it. So it is allowing some of the hyperpigmentation to pop back through my foundation. So if you look at this cheek, you can barely see that little dot right there. But let me show you, as soon as I apply blush on it, that will that has that shine, it will bring that through the foundation. So I'm gonna go into the Warmth Magic. So let me grab this shade. So you can see that that spot came out more, right? So it if it has a little bit of that shine to it, it will do that. So just kind of know that. But truthfully, I'm not seeing that much of a difference between these two shades on my cheek. I'm not, sh are you guys seeing that much of a difference? I mean, I'm going to powder this, so I went in a little bit heavy, but I'm not seeing like that much of a difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some bronzer on and I'm gonna powder. And of course, I'm gonna be using my Gucci bronzer that I absolutely love. And I'm also going to be using my Gucci powder, which I love. So this is the final look. And like I said, I did go ahead and use the Gucci bronzer and the Gucci powder. And as far as the lippy, this lippy matches this eye look to a perfection. I grabbed this shade from Tom Ford, which is in the shade Pussycat. I actually stocked up on a bunch of Tom Ford lipsticks because I really like the Tom Ford lipstick formula. I just hate paying <laughs> the price for them. So during the summer, I think there was a sale on a few different websites. So I picked up a bunch of different lipsticks. So I think I paid like 25 bucks for this. So that's it for look number three and the try on of the blushes. Let's go ahead and jump into the swatches. I'm gonna swatch this palette and also swatch it against a few palettes that I might find that might be similar. I'll be honest with you, I really don't have anything that has these exact tones in it. It just, I don't know that I'm gonna have it, but I'm gonna do a few comparisons just to kind of give you an idea. And then I will jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts. I'm gonna start with the palette. I had high hopes for this palette for two reasons. Number one, I absolutely love Gucci's bronzer and powder. The way that this bronzer blends into the skin, it's like seamless and it's the most beautiful textured powder where it applies in such a soft, gorgeous way. And I don't even have to feel like I need to buff powder over top because it just warms up the skin, but in a very soft, soft way. I have loved this bronzer since the day I used it. The first day I used it, I was hooked. So then when the powder was launched, I was all over this powder. I loved this powder. Still love this powder. It is a beautiful powder. 
and I love it. Today I set my entire face with it. Because I loved the bronzer and powder so much, I was thinking, oh, they're gonna make the best eyeshadows. Yeah, not so much. This on no level is worth this price. This is ridiculous. $149, I think you're paying for the packaging because I really don't feel like they put a lot of money into the formula. Now these satin shadows are gorgeous, just beautiful textures. The mattes are not that great in this palette. They're just not. Might I say they remind me of like drugstore mattes. There's a lot of drugstore matte shadows that just don't blend very good and they get a little bit patchy. I would not recommend this palette on any level. Now, yes, this is really beautiful. And if you decide during the Sephora sale that you would love to have this Gucci case for like jewelry or whatever, then you do you, boo, okay? But don't buy this for the eyeshadows because the eyeshadows are not good. This shade is terrible. It's the worst pink I've ever seen in my life. It looks so beautiful when you look down on it. And then what really ticks me off about this shade right here, let me just say, when you look at the swatches, this looks like the prettiest rose gold ever. And it's not. It's the dullest rose gold. Like it is absolutely gross. Yeah, I don't I don't like this palette, you guys. I can't recommend it on any level. Do not waste your money on this. I'm just gonna give it to you straight. I don't like to like beat around the bush. I like to give it to you straight. Don't waste your money on this. This is a complete waste of money. Now the cream blushes, they're actually really pretty. Personally, I have kind of become kind of obsessed with the Victoria Beckham cream stick blushes. I actually really like this formula and I like this formula more than the Clay de Peau only because the, this formula doesn't make my foundation transparent. Um, now don't get me wrong, I've had other cream blushes do that way worse. So there's some cream blushes out there that are just really bad. Like I've mentioned in previous videos, if I'm wearing a tinted moisturizer, then those type of cream blushes that have that sheen to it, they're, they're perfect because I'm wearing a tinted moisturizer, so therefore I'm not wanting to wear a lot of coverage anyway. But when I'm wearing like a medium to full coverage foundation, I'm wearing it for a reason. That means that I want all that hyperpigmentation covered. So when you go in with a cream blush, and it brings it to the surface, you're like, well, gum, what was the point of putting on foundation? I should have just put on a tinted moisturizer, right? So if as long as you know that, you'll be fine. But these are really beautiful. Are they worth $60? No, but they are clay to pose. So there you go. So I am very grateful to my friend for sending them to me. And I will definitely love them and use them because I do like them. And I like the way that they look on the skin. They give a very fresh, natural look. Um, but yeah. They're expensive. They're $60 each. I know, kind of crazy. So those are my overall thoughts, you guys. Sound off down below in the comments section. How are you feeling about this Gucci palette? Let us know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.